we're just going to roll with it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right, man, let's talk. Let's do it. What's up, everybody? I'm Chris Champion. <laughs> Clearly, I have issues. <laughs> But you have whiskey, so that's all that matters, right? Whiskey can hey, fix all your hey. problems. <laughs> Got the whiskey. Hey, yo, I figured I figured you would like this too. This is actually an, an elimination chamber whiskey glass. Oh yeah, nice, nice. <laughs> man, you know, you know me and wrestling, bro. I could talk wrestling all day. Dude, I love it, man. I love yeah. it. Look, uh, look, welcome to the uh, welcome to the podcast, bro. I appreciate you being on. I love doing this uh, with all my community members, getting them in and chatting with them and just having a good time. Um, the reason yeah, I dude, asked I, uh, you specifically, I appreciate the invite. Yeah, the reason I asked you specifically is because uh, I've been we've been meaning to do this for a long, long time, and um, I just yeah. honestly in the in the last couple of months it just hasn't been a viable option on the channel because I've just been so busy with everything else. But um, we're gonna get it, bringing it back, and we're gonna bring back more of them. And uh, yeah, welcome to uh, the first podcast of twenty twenty two with the one and only bearded man himself. So I appreciate you being on, bro. Now the first thing. Yeah. We're all suited up. We're dapper. We're looking good, oh, bro. Maybe. Looking good. I knew suit. It had to be suits. It had to be suits. Of, the two of, us, <laughs> of course. Um, for me, dude, uh, the first question I always love to ask my uh, my guests on and the people in my community is, um, look, obviously you, you yourself are a streamer. You are a gamer. Um, you're someone who enjoys that that side of things as well. Um, I watch your channel pretty regularly. I really enjoy hanging out with you. You're always a fucking fun dude and a good vibe. Um, for everyone who doesn't know you and who, who's seen your name around but doesn't know much about you, do you want to uh, give us the give us the 401 on, on Chris Champion, what you're all about, why you stream, and uh, you know what uh, what's the future hold for you? What do you do? Absolutely, man. So I'm Chris Champion, clearly. Chris Champion. That arm is a fake representation of what I really have, but it's cool. <laughs> it's all right. It's the illusion. Um, so yeah, man, I've, I've always been a gamer, dude. Um hardcore gamer i love playing uh i love getting on with my friends vibing out having a good time man um man streaming what got me into streaming dude i you know i was playing for hours on end and i talked to my wife and i'm like hey why don't i just turn on a camera and make some stupid faces and play a video game and see what happens yeah. and uh she was she was man she was completely behind it and uh Man, when I first started streaming, dude, because I, I see a lot of people, first-time streamers, and, you know, they're real stressed out about their equipment. Yo, I had nothing. I had a PlayStation and a screen. That was all I had. <laughs> um, unfortunately, my PS4 wasn't the best thing for it. The stream lagged. It, like, it never worked right. So, you know, my wife, being the amazing person she is, is like, well, let's go buy you a computer so you can stream off of. Okay. So we went and got me a uh, HP gaming laptop, which I'm still using to this day until I get my PC built. Mm -hmm. um, but then I didn't realize you needed a capture card and all that to bring from what's on the PlayStation to what's on the screen. Yeah. So I had to go invest a little money. My my credit card was crying every time I, I swiped it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we got the capture card all set up, man. Um, I, I had a great friend that gifted me my first webcam. So, you know, I had a cam set up and man, I just went from there slowly over time. I've added parts to it. You know, I've got my light now. Um, I've got my HyperX quadcast that I can talk through now. I've got keyboard mouse. I've got a stream deck. It, it was all a grind to get that man. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I have to thank my amazing community for, you know, bits, donations, gifted subs. Cause all that helped me turn my stream into the mediocre one that it is today. <laughs> no, I get you, dude. I get you. You gotta start. You gotta start somewhere, bro. And that's the thing. Like, you know, you still, you still got how many followers you got now? One point two k followers as well. And uh, yeah, I'm at like you know, one point two somewhere right around in there. Yeah. See, that's no, that's no mean feat, bro. Like, that's that's uh, that's something to be proud of. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you always have plenty. Man, of, plenty I, of I remember. I remember hitting my one k. Um, that was probably one of the biggest achievements I hit in my life was hitting my first thousand followers. Mm. Um, and not only that, man, you know, my community is a, a big part of why I do what I do, man. I love to help new people out. I love to have small streamers come in and try to get them helped out, connected with some new people, grow your followers, grow your viewers. Uh, me and me and Zilla actually talked about it the other night, man. I remember helping him get to 500. Um, Mm -hmm. And it, it, that was like a shining moment for me was helping him hit 500. 
Yeah, I remember. I remember it vividly. As um, <laughs> we were literally talking about it yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yesterday, yeah. And that was insane. And now you're sitting at, what, 2,300? Yeah, yeah. This is the thing, right? It's just... um. I don't know. It's, it, it takes it takes a, a real a real good bunch of uh, individuals who uh, all want to help each other out and you know talk and vibe. Like the reason I do this every day is because I love doing it because I get to talk to all my best friends, right? You know, and they they all yeah. just come in and we all just chat and we have a good time and uh, you know that's that's what it's all about. That's what it should be about. It shouldn't be about coming in here and being like, oh, this is such a job, like this is such a chore, you know, whatever it might right. be. No, this is this is a this is a hobby that I love to do because you know I come in here and. And as, as soon as I turn on my computer and I press live, you know, there's 10 people in here saying hello. And that's, that's what it's all about. You know, you get yeah, to that absolutely. point and you're just like, you know what, this is what it makes, this is, it's worth it. But it is a grind. It's not an easy, it's, yeah, it's yeah. a lot of hours invested. Um, if you were, if you're an investment banker, <laughs> you wouldn't take a chance on Twitch because it's just a lot of time and a lot of effort and not for, for, for not a lot of a uh, monetary gain. But um, at the end of the day, bro, you've got to start somewhere. And uh, you know what? It's, it's one of those things that if, if, if at any point in, in the future I could do this for full time, I fucking would do it in a heartbeat. But unfortunately, like, it's just Twitch. They just, they hemorrhage the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah, I think, that's, I think that's ultimately, like, I mean, realistically, that's ultimate, ultimately everybody's dream is to wake up in the morning, turn your camera on, and play games for 8 to 10 hours, and you know, make good money at it. I, I would love to be there one day. That would be amazing to me. Was, well, when you know. I first, uh, when I first started gaming when I was a kid and, um, I would go to school, right. And, uh, the teachers and my mom would ask me, what do you want to do when you grow up? I was like, I want to play video games for a living. <laughs> and, and my mom would laugh because back in there, that was in the nineties, bro. Like in the nineties, that shit didn't exist. Like back then it was like, no, that's not, that's, that's a joke, right? And my mom would laugh at me because she's like, no, get a real job. And then my teachers would be like, that's really unrealistic because that's not a thing. And now you can literally do that. <laughs> like it's an actual thing now. And like before, before it was like, that's like a pipe dream and you're just being a child. And like, and everyone's like, I want to be an astronaut. I'm like, well, being an astronaut is way less achievable than playing video games for a living. <laughs> it's like, why is that person's aspiration so much better than mine? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I was just like yeah. always laughing at that. It's like, I want to, I want to be an astronaut. I want to go to the moon. I'm like, that is absolutely way, way harder than playing video games for a living. Um, right. So, you know, sometimes it's funny how society just morphs itself because I mean, look, when I was growing up and you and I are similar ages, right? So when I was growing I think up, so. I'm 35, so I don't know how old you are. Yeah, I'm 32, right? So yeah, that's, well, yeah, we're I, pretty close. When I was growing up, all of these things that you can do now is for jobs, they didn't exist. Like, you know, right. social media marketing. We didn't even know what social media was when we were kids. We didn't have a fucking, I didn't even have a fucking mobile phone until I was like 15. Right. Yeah. So like, I didn't know what that was. Um, nobody knew what graphic design was. Nobody knew what websites were like, you know, the internet was brand new when we were kids. Like it just didn't, you know, we're old as fuck. <laughs> not like yeah, and that's that's another thing that comes with like the Twitch stream is like, I mean, you have to learn how to do your own overlay. Well, I guess unless you, you're paying somebody for it, but learn your own overlays, uh, your tiles that go in your stream, your social media links. I mean, there there's so much to it. It's it's insane. I never thought when I started streaming that this much would go into it. Yeah, And now that I've seen it, it's like, man, this started out as a hobby. Like, yeah, we'll see where it goes. And then, yeah, like you say, it quickly, quickly turned into a job where it's, you know, a full-time schedule. I have a schedule that I try, I try to stick to. Mm. Um, and so, man, it's, it's insane how quickly it takes off like that. Yeah, I'm always trying to stick to my schedule too, like, you know, with my community. But i got to be honest, sometimes life just gets in the way. Like you just got to, you know, yeah. you got, you got as, as much like consistency is always key. I always say this to people who are like just starting or trying to get affiliate or whatever. C consistency and, uh, and scheduling is absolutely paramount to everything you do. Because if you just randomly stream, no one will know you're streaming and no one will come to watch. So like if you, if you take the time to say, hey, I'm going to be streaming at this time uh, on this day, every single week, uh, you can expect me to be here. Then, you know, obviously you give yourself a leg up. But um, when you stream as much as I do, like sometimes things change. Just depends what's going on, you know. We stream every day here, like every day, sometimes twice a day. Like I'm, uh, I'm all about it, bro. 
I love it. Yeah, your stream schedule, man. Woo, you stream a long time, dude. Yeah. I wish I could run hours like that, man. You're a beast for what you do, dude. Yeah, You're an yeah, absolute yeah. unit for how much you stream. <laughs> do you know, you know, I and I looked at my hours streamed last month. It was like 212 hours or something, or something crazy. Wow, dude, that's madness, dude. <laughs> like, it was something stupid like that. And I was just like, but you know what? It's, it's, the reason I do so many hours is not because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a masochist. It's because I love it, because I enjoy it. You know, I'm playing yeah, games and, I'm, and it's six, seven hours in. And I'm like, I'm actually really enjoying it. I don't know why I should end. You know what I mean? Like, you know, a yeah, lot of people just be yeah, like, let's yeah. end. Let's I've, end. I've heard you say that a few times in your, you know, live streams when we're all, you know, we're all just in there vibing out and you're like, Man, I should really end, but I'm having a great time. So let's yeah. just keep this rolling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, why not? Like, everybody's having a good time. Why not keep it going? Like, oh, yeah, it's, it's nothing It's nothing like a, like we'll be into a game. We'll finish the game. Um, we're chilling after the game. If that, Sometimes there's like 30 to 40 people in here just all chatting. I'm like, well, may as well just keep chatting. Like, what, are yeah, we, what else have, dude. What else have we, we got to do? If you conversation like, happening in your stream, then... You may as well know. just keep it rolling. Like, like Maya said, like New Year's Eve was fucking ridiculous. Like, I... I I, I started at 10.30 my time uh, on the 31st. And mm. um, so I was like, yeah, we'll watch the, the Sydney fireworks together and we'll chill and we'll hang out and happy new year. Um, and then I said to myself, well, we're going to do a 12 hour stream today no matter what, because I want to get to, uh, I want to get to UK new year because a lot of our, a lot of our viewers and a lot of our um, subscribers are from the UK. So I was like, or, or like in the European area. So I was like, yeah, we'll go all the way to European new year. Like, why not? So it's 12 hours, right? So I was thinking, oh, okay, that's fine. It's not going to be hard because I've done 12-hour streams so many times. Sometimes I do 12-hour streams during the week and I forget. Like, I'll be like yeah. eight hours in and I may as well go for 12. I'm, I'm vibing this game. I'm really enjoying it. So, And if I have the time, I may as well, right? But then, like, we got to 12 hours for London. And then Maya comes in and she's like, hey, um, do you think you could make it to ET? And I was like, what do you reckon? I'm like, she's like, you think you could make it to the New York ball drop? And I was like, I fucking could. I'm like, let's do it. And so, like, I grabbed a couple <laughs> of more drinks and uh, we, we pushed it all the way till uh, the, new, the, the New York ball drop. And that was 18 wow. hours. So I was on stream for 18 hours. And um, dude, it was like, it was like, this, like by the time, by the time I finished streaming, it was like the end of New Year's day for me. Like- That's insane. <laughs> That's absolutely madness. <laughs> like I streamed through the night, through the day, and then back into the night again. And uh, it was like, it was like dinner time by the time I finished the, the, the next day. Which is just like, it's just wild. And, it just uh, fueled off of beer and energy. <laughs> yeah, and then when I, even when I ended, I went back on uh, to Discord and I was like saying Happy New Year and talking to everyone as they pushed into like West Coast. And like, yeah. so I was up for like 24, 25 hours, slept yeah. for like five hours and then go back on and streamed again the next day. So like, I don't know, bro. There's something wrong with Bro, and, it, and it's, it's, it's interesting that you say that because a lot of people don't realize like when you're a streamer dude your 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 grind doesn't stop once the camera turns off once your camera turns off you're out in twitch community vibing with other people's communities meeting those people and bringing you know hopefully they'll come check you out um i mean that like like you said earlier you met me through crow dude that's exactly how we met i, I wasn't streaming I was in Crow stream, saw your name come across. We started talking, and then, oh shit, I'll pop into this guy's stream while we're uh, while we're vibing out, and now we're like best friends. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. And you know the crazy part is out of it is it's like um, I started. So the the way I found Crow's stream and um, the way I got in there, I literally one of my mates. You know, do you know Ragnar? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I do. Yeah. Yeah. So he raided Crow, and I was for, like, I'm his mod. And so he raided Crow and I was away from my computer. I was like, like in the toilet or something. And I come back and there was, he was on my screen. I was like, who the fuck is this? And then I, I sat there for maybe 20, 25 minutes just watching. And the energy that man created in 20, 25 minutes, it made me want to fucking like jump through the screen and hug him. I was like, you are fucking vibing so hard. And, every, and I was like, is he like this every single stream? And he, and he is. And this was just, this was just after he got partner. Like literally like... I don't know, maybe like a couple of weeks after you got partner. And I was just like, wow, like this guy is all energy. This guy is wild. And I followed yeah, and subscribed. Yeah, I, I swear, dude, day. I swear Crow has G Fuel just pumping through his veins. <laughs> yeah. Because like, dude, it's madness, dude. It's eight o'clock in the morning, my time when he goes live. And he is just like. Ready. 
in the clouds with energy. And I'm like, bro, how are you this pumped up at eight o'clock in the morning? <laughs> it must be like, it must be like the, uh, the military side of it too. Like, you know, he just, yeah, he just, that's true. Yeah. He's, uh, he's used to getting grind, up early and you? grinding yeah. early and stuff. Yeah. 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 I, it's, it's just, it's incredible to watch. And like, as soon as I was there, I was literally there for 20 minutes and I was like, I followed and subscribed within five minutes of doing both. And he was just like, what the fuck? And I, and I was just like, bro, I literally like, I sat here like 20 minutes. I don't know how I got here. But um, I'm staying, <laughs> and I've been there ever since. And then I met you there, and I met a whole bunch of awesome people there. And I was just like, this "Yeah, is, man, this his is streams awesome. are his streams are incredible, man." The the like I like you said, the energy he puts out, and I mean, he showed some clips back from a couple couple. It was probably about a week ago. He played some clips from when he first started streaming, dude, and he had no setup whatsoever. Yeah. And you could see him like he'd hit a nasty shot in Warzone and like look down at his phone and like clip it real quick because he had no mods to clip for him. And, stuff. <laughs> and just to see where that dude is now is it's it's insane, man. Now like, he has he's, like, he's such a good dude. Yeah, now he has averages of like one fifty plus because he's just. Kind of I know, I know. When he did that giveaway for uh. The soundboards and all that. Oh uh, yeah, a couple weeks awesome. ago, dude, he had like five hundred people in his in his <laughs> chat at one time. I was like, man, dude, that's crazy. Like, right? if only I could get to that. <laughs> well, this is it. Like, he's the perfect example, and this is why I brought it up. He's a perfect example of what it takes. It's, it's like it's like he's the perfect example of what it takes to make it on this platform. You need to, you just need to put in the hours and the effort. And like, you know, he, he, he makes an effort to come in here. He comes in here all the time and he comes into your stream and he comes into other people's streams all the time. Like he makes the effort for everyone around him and everyone in his community. And I, I basically yeah. like love to like, I started doing that originally and I've mirrored, like, I've, I've seen what he does and I'm like, look, you got to learn from the best and he's the best. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He's literally one of the best. I mean, you look at all these, um, and he talked about this a little bit a while back, but you look at all these big streamers like, you know, Nick Merckx, Z Laner, and, well, not really Doc, but, um, you know, some of those big guys who don't really interact with their community. They're they're just kind of there, like... Well, the game you know, I've, 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 I'll watch Nick Merckx sometimes, and I very rarely see that dude look over at his chat and respond to things. Well, the thing is, too, like, you know, you try reading a chat that is moving that fast. Like, it's... Yeah, it's... yeah that's... Yeah, his chat is just... <laughs> He's got 50,000 people Flying all through. fucking just pumping shit through. Like, it's, it's it's impossible. And I think, and I think you know, when you get that big and, like, you're doing all that kind of stuff, uh, look, it is it is your job. Do you know what I mean? Like, it is, yeah. it is it's your job over over anything else. And, like, I, this is why I love, I love the Zilla Patch. And this is why I always call it the Zilla Patch and the Zilla Patch community. And, and every, because every single person in here makes, makes this up. Like, you know what I mean? And, like, I don't want that to change. Like, I don't. I would rather, I would rather like, you know, stay smaller with, uh, with all the people in here. And so I can chat to everyone than right, have, right. have like so many people. I can't read the chat. Cause I would like, you know, the people who have that many people in their chats, they, they were pro gamers already. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they were, they were pro gamers already. The reason they, they built, they built all that up and they, and, and they, and they were good on Twitch is because they started somewhere else. Like they didn't, you know, and Nick that's Merckx like, didn't and that's kind of like Twitch, the, you know I mean? like he was already a gamer. Like, do you know what I mean? Like and, he, and that's kind of the double edged sword to it, right? Like, you you want to be big, but you don't want to be so big that you lose track of your community. So you kind of want to stay small at the same time. So it's like it's kind of a double edged sword because yeah, it is. you know, I would never, I would never want to get to a point that you know, to where my my core community, you know, the the guys and girls I play with every single night, I would never want to get to that spot to where like. I lose, you know, them in the chat or in the community. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, and that's, and that's why I say that, but you know, you can't, <clears throat> you can't be upset with growth as well. Like, yeah. You've got to have yeah. that balance. You've got to have a balance, but I love, uh, I, I just love chatting to people in general. So I would, um, yeah, absolutely. It's never going to change in here. Um, absolutely. The, the question why I would like to ask you, um, is uh what's your well, what's your what's the stream like that was one of your favorites and what's the most memorable did you have one one of my favorite streams uh let's see a couple months ago we were running um i don't know if we were in vanguard yet i, I think we were still on modern warfare running cyber and uh this uh another somewhat big streamer i don't know if you've heard of him but godku mm -hmm. um 
came in and dropped an insane raid on me. I mean, I think he came in with like 120 people on me. Um, blew my mind. My my game went to complete crap after that. I'm just like, <laughs> Happens every time, doesn't it? How did you just come in with 120 people? Like, how did you even find me, bro? Yeah. And, you know, I'm looking at my chat, and my chat is just rolling, dude. Like, for a split second, I felt like what Nick Merckx feels like when he's watching his chat just <laughs> roll through. And I'm like, this is madness, bro. And there's there's subs going off, and there's bits going off, and there's emotes all through the chat. And, you know, people are trying to say hi to me, and how are you doing, and raid, and all that. And, like, Man, it blew my mind, dude. And he he uh, he's a really solid guy. I, I go into his stream still, and, uh, you know, he still remembers me. And uh, he's a he's really down to earth guy, and he's, I think he's sitting up there like thirty three, thirty four thousand people. Um, but dude always looks at his chat, man, and he for the most part responds to everybody in his chat, and uh, and he's usually sitting at two hundred and twenty to three hundred viewers. Crazy, though. and so that that was probably my favorite stream, man, is when he dropped that raid on me, and I, dude, I was, yeah, my game went to complete crap because I was like, I, you know, I don't even care about the game at this point. <laughs> Isn't it crazy that at any point in time, no matter what you're doing, somebody could do that? Yeah, yeah, it man. Keeps and it interesting, I, right? And I think there's a, I think there's a small part of every streamer that waits for that one moment for some middle to big to big big streamer to come in and just be like. Hey, let's break this dude's stream and make his day and drop a massive di uh, raid on him. I've seen and, it happen. And, <laughs> it's wild. Let's see how it handles it. I had a couple and... of mates. Um, I had a couple of mates who've been raided by Symphony, and like, mm -hmm. it's it's always funny because like they'll be sitting there. They probably have like twenty or thirty people just chatting, you know, uh, playing some play some Warzone. Um, they'll be running around Rebirth, like sweating it out, you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, four thousand people just come in, and and they just like, they just break. Like they just, yeah. their, their game just turns to shit. Um, they don't know <laughs> what to do. The sound alerts break the stream labs. Like Nightbot has a heart attack. Like it's just oh, everything, right. <laughs> everything just fucking turns to shit. And like, it's like, oh my God, I can't believe, like it's both, it's both disbelief and honest panic. It's just like, yeah, I yeah. don't know what to do right now. Like, and that's, uh, it's funny. Like, you know, to, when that kind of thing happens to, especially to friends, like when I see it happen to mates, when I'm in their stream, like as a mod or when I'm in their stream and I'm watching, and something like that happens to them. I feel so, I feel so happy for them, but at the same time, I'm so stressed out for them. I'm just like, yeah. I don't know how you're gonna handle this. I have no idea what I'm doing right now. I'm just gonna sit here and let you handle it. And they're just like, somebody help me, like, <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like, well, and you and you called it yesterday on uh, who did we uh, who did we raid oh, Rose. yesterday? She was right in the middle of Warzone. Yeah, Rose. And I like, I watched. Rose. I waited until she loaded into a game too before I raided her. I was watching yeah. her on my other screen. I'm like, she's loading into a game. As soon as the waiting room was done, I then sent the raid. Cause like she landed and she was looking for a gun and uh, then she got the money for the, for the, for the loadout. And then we raided with 60 people and she shit us. <laughs> and she's like, Her Oh, game. I forgot like, how I to think, play. I think every like, time <laughs> she landed after that, she died. Cause she could not focus. Cause she was so like, she was so uh, like in tune with her game. But yeah. like, <laughs> you know, all of a sudden there's 60 people in your chat. And she's like, I don't know what to look at. I don't know what to look at. And we always, uh, and I always love it because like those of those 60 people in the chat, everybody was, well, we had a lot, at least half of them were active. So like half of them were all talking at the same time, all spamming rugged raid and like, you know, throwing shit around. And she was just like, I don't know how to function. And I was just like, this is, <laughs> this is the greatest thing. I love doing that. Like I love being able to have like the opportunity to do that to other people because it makes, it yeah. makes a smile on my face. Also like the reason I raided her too is because like we played games yesterday and like, I never played games with her before and we played games with Reese and Reese has only just come back from like some time off as well. And so it was good to play games with them again for like, you know, you know, and uh, I was playing with her for the first time um, and I met her yesterday and I was like, oh my God, she's, she streams as well. And I followed her and then uh, saw her, she was on. I was like, well, this is perfect timing. You know, why not? Yeah. Like, you know, she wouldn't be expecting it either. So like, uh, and you said, and you said she's like hella sweaty too, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So like we were playing, she was dropping like 15, 20 kills a game when I was playing with her yesterday. And then uh, I was thinking to yeah, myself, how sweaty. do I, I was like, how do I, how do I break her? Like without trying. And I was like, this is the perfect opportunity to do this. 
And I was like, you know, so fuck it. I was thought to send it and uh, yeah, put a smile on her face and uh, got a couple to, of- uh, to uh, answer dog lady's question, I am drinking um, Crown Royal Vanilla and Coke. That's really? That's interesting. That's an interesting mix. It's very Good sweet, stuff, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. Are you a sweet tooth? Do you like sugar in that? Are you uh, all big into that? Oh, uh, dude, sugar is probably my biggest vice. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's terrible. Never, never been into the sugar stuff, but I, I'll be honest with you. I've seen a lot of people are just like, I wish I'd never discovered it. <laughs> like, yeah, honestly. Yeah. Oh, I get no that. No Dr. Pepper. No Dr. Pepper. No Dr. Pepper. I don't. I don't drink Dr. Pepper ever. Eh? We don't we, like. We have it here, but it's not like it's not like the thing that you see on the shelf first. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, I'm. I, uh, I live in Texas, so it's pretty basically a part of my religion to drink Dr. Pepper since it's made here. <laughs> nice. Are you um you from Texas originally as well? Yeah, yeah. I was born in a uh, Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi. I have no idea what that yeah, is. Yeah, it's about it's about three hours south of me, basically. Yeah, nice, nice. And you've always lived in the same state, and you know. No, I've bounced around between a few states. I've lived in uh, Iowa, Tennessee. Uh, I did a short stint over in Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's that's the main states I've lived in. Yeah, and uh, family. You have family as well? Uh, so my mom and dad, uh, about two, three years ago, three years ago, uh, moved from Iowa down to Texas to uh, be closer to me and my wife and to leave the snow that they absolutely hate. Yeah, that's fair. No one likes snow, really, do they? So, and then I've got a big chunk of family that live in Tennessee still. My sister lives in Tennessee. My brother lives in uh, three years in June. Yeah, there you go. Three. That's, my, that's my mom, actually, dog lady. Oh, really? <laughs> Hey mom. <laughs> uh, but yeah, my brother lives uh, up in Virginia, so we're kind of spread out all over. That's awesome. That's awesome. And you have pets, dogs, cats, anything like that? Yeah, I got one dog somewhere around here. I don't know where he's at. Yeah, we love we love pets. We love pets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Obviously, you know me. I have a cat, and I love my cat. It's like you know, we just uh, we we love vibing out with. Dude, you pets. probably have the most chilled out, relaxed cat I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, she just sits like. Obviously, me all the, the whole the time. It just chills. Yeah, she's got that little post that sits like right in front of your yeah, desk. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, you know what it is, right? So my my cat being rescue and being like I pretty much like you know um uh, what would you say I raised I raised the cat from from you know she was pretty a, a scat cat to me originally because I found her in a bin right and yeah. I, I basically raised her from a kitten to now and she, we've been like you know she's been moving around with me for like the last six seven years. And like, so she's pretty much like separation anxiety is very, very, very intense with her. And so she yeah. basically just follows me from room to room. Like if I'm happy to shower, she's sitting in the bathroom. You know what I mean? <laughs> if I'm on the toilet, she's sitting at the door. Like which, it, she just, she just follows me around. And um, like if I'm in bed, she's sleeping next to me. Like if I'm here on the computer, she's sitting in front of me. So like I put the post up there so she could see me when I'm game. Cause obviously I game yeah. a lot. And so she doesn't get upset about it. Cause she's always like meowing and trying to find me and shit. So like if you sit up there and she can see me across the monitor, then she doesn't get that separation anxiety. So like, I'm trying to like, uh, you know, it's, it, it, it's kind of like a, a remedy for something that shouldn't be a problem, <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> but uh, she's just, that's just the way she is. Cause I'm, I'm, I work long hours too, like when I'm working. So, you know, when I come home, she goes a bit nuts, but like, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of nice though. Like she's a, she's a pretty good cat. Like she's pretty well behaved. Yeah, yeah. she is. She's, she's chill and. She kind of just lets you do your own thing, except when she gets into that chair and starts clawing at it, like I heard you talking about. <laughs> Bro, the left corner of my Secret Labs chair, like, is just fucking destroyed. Like, I can't, I, <laughs> and it's so frustrating. Like, she has so many things in this house she could use other than this chair. Like, she has, there's a chair over there, like my desk chair for my workplace over there. That's fine. You know, they've got, they got cat post here. i got a cat post in the bedroom. Like, there are so many things she can use, you know, other than, other than my chair. And, and then and then it's just like every now and again I just feel these claws just on the left side of my chair when I'm gaming. I'm like, you mother, like, <laughs> what are you fucking doing? <laughs> like, get off that shit. Like, this is the only. He's thing like, I, I know just... I got scratching post, but I'm gonna fuck up the expensive pa- uh, scratching post. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like, you know, it's like get fucked, man. Like, just don't be that guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, let's see what it is. Um, so more about more about like where you live and what you do and stuff. Um. When, um, 
what do you do? What do you do for a living? This is my next question. I like to ask people like, what do you do for a living? How did you get into it? And why, why do you do it? So, like, uh, I actually work for a small pest control company out here in Texas. Really? And, uh, so I, I just kill bugs all day, basically. <laughs> nice. How did you get into that? Uh, man, it was real funny, dude. I was, uh, I was working at a Verizon store, yeah, uh, selling phones and my boss now came in to buy some company phones for the company. And, you know, she's telling me what she does and, and all that. And, you know, I was kind of bored with working at cell phones, man. Plus I didn't really like my boss that much. So yeah, I just kind of asked her and I'm like, Hey, you guys hiring by chance? And she was like, yeah, actually we are. And I was like, Oh, okay. And so she, uh, right in front of her, actually, my boss came up and actually took my sale and put the commission under his name so he didn't have to pay me commission. That's the kind of uh, manager he was. Oh, yeah, nice guy. And uh, so she uh, wrote her number down on the back of a business card and had her son run it into me. And he's like, hey, man, my mom wants you to call her after you get off work. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So I called her, man. We got the interview set up. And, man, her husband, who's like, like, the, the big owner, like, mm. didn't think I was going to make it. Because I'm working at a cell phone store, man. You know, I'm all, I'm all in a shirt and tie and, like, yeah, looking yeah. good. And so he didn't think I was going to make it. And I'm now the longest employee they've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it, though. Like, that's commitment. But, yeah, man, it's a good job, dude. I'm in a truck by myself all day. So, you know, I don't have, you know, I don't have people, like, constantly watching over me and stuff like that. Um, yeah. You know, it's a good job, dude. I enjoy it. Uh, I see new stuff every day. Like nothing's ever the same, mm. um, and I get to drive all over Houston. <laughs> nice. I can relate to that. I'm in a truck all day by myself as well, which is like the way I like it, to be honest. Yeah. You know, you just get onto with it. You know, get your job done. You go home. You know, you don't have to. You know, rely on other people to. Uh, you're waiting on things and doing bits and pieces. You can just kind of get your job done and get on with it. That's what I like about it. Like it's. Uh, yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, uh, that's that's. That's awesome, dude. Pest control. I never fucking. I, you know, I never even knew that about you. Yeah. This is why. This is yeah, why. A lot of people are surprised uh, when I tell them that's what I do, man. They're they're pretty surprised by it. And I'm like, man, it's it's a job, man. You know, this is what, what a there, podcast can do. Go home. Yeah. That's what the podcast can do for people in the community. Like, um, I can guarantee you, not one person in this chat besides your mom uh, would have known that you you do pest control. <laughs> like, <laughs> You know what I mean? So that's just, that's wild. Like, that's all you can expect in podcasts. Like, you can just learn things about people you didn't know already. And, that's uh, good. Pest control and streaming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's the combination of the gods, man. You know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to ask you, too, like, um, when, uh, look, we, we, we have a lot in common, you and me, right? We have a lot in common. We always, we're always having conversations about things that we love and things that we enjoy. Um, and and I, you knew this was coming, but heavy metal. Oh, right? it's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> you know, you know how much of a metalhead I am. Okay, absolutely. Like, you, you understand the passion that I have for metal music. Um, yeah, I need, I need, I need your 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 top three. Um, I need your top three, at both both either artists and albums, or just just in general. And I need, I need some sort of metal story that would only become from someone who's a metalhead. <laughs> All right, so we'll, we'll go uh, top three artists. Um, I think, oh man, God, so hard to narrow it down, dude. It is, dude. It is. This is why it's I think a hot number top three. I, I think number three, I've always got to go old school, man. They're, they're always going to be one of the trendsetters that, that really got me into metal. Um, uh, you know, I got to give it to Slipknot, dude. Yeah. You know, they, so, they've been around for years. I love them. Uh, I know they went through a short period where Slipknot was not the cool pan to like anymore, <laughs> but I still love them, man. I loved them. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, number two at the moment, man, uh, Slaughter to Prevail. I That's... dig everything that they do. That's so good. Um, <laughs> That's so good. I love, I love a good Russian metal band dude and the fact that he changes languages in the middle of songs from english to russian back to english it's it's the best Wild, right? it's, and their 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 music is so so disgustingly heavy <laughs> oh man and it's powerful bro like you feel you you uh you hear the drop like you know you put a headphones on right and listen to that that movie yeah 
Oh, sorry, that, that that band. So you listen to like so agony or something, right? And you hear yeah, that yeah. you hear that drop. You hear the drop in the middle of that song. It just makes yeah. you want to fucking smash your head into the ground. Like it's just <laughs> it's just so good. Like as a metalhead, and you're like, well, you know, this is the thing, the curse of the metalhead, right? You start at one point of heavy, and then it's not heavy enough, and you move yeah. on to the next point of heavy, and then that's not heavy enough, and then it's, <laughs> it's, it's the progression of a metalhead. Like you start. It's like you start at Metallica and you end at Death Clock. Like you have to just keep yeah. getting heavier and heavier and heavier. And to the point where you're listening to, you know, Slaughter to Prevail and you're like, it could be, be it could be heavier. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, and that's, you and know, that's that fucking saying heavy, something. But I feel like we could go a little we could, heavier. We could go, we could go best. And this is, this is why people get into stuff like Grindcore. Because they just need yeah. that, they, they just need that, that smash and grab sort of stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is like... I need that. I need that fix in my head. Like, you know, and this, I, I just <laughs> yeah. love it, bro. I love it. It's just a wild thing. And every single time I say to someone who's a metalhead, I'm like, it just needs to be heavier. They know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what happened with Slipknot, dude. Like, you know, I'm young. I'm in like, what, middle school when Slipknot really started blowing up. Yeah, I remember buying yeah. Iowa when I was in like, like, what, primary school. Yeah. And, you know, at that point, I'm like, dude, this is the heaviest thing I've ever listened to. This is amazing. Yeah. And, you know, I'm I'm jamming Slipknot. But as I get older and I start finding heavier and heavier bands, I'm like, dude, there's people out there that do it heavier than Slipknot. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> I didn't even know this was a thing. <laughs> 100%, bro. And that's, the, that's so much. That's why I love the, the genre itself. Because it's forever changing. Like, oh, you yeah, know, absolutely. Pop, pop music stays the same forever. Like, it's oh, always yeah. the same shit over and over again. Like, every time I hear a pop song, I just think, what are they trying to sell me? Because it, yeah. like, it sounds like a jingle. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it, like, it sounds like a jingle for, like, rice crackers or some shit. Like, you know, like, what, are they, what are they trying to sell me today? Like, I hear, I hear every single pop song is the same. It just sounds like someone wrote it for an advertisement. They're trying to sell you all of the Abercrombie and Fitch that they can. Yeah, it's like it's like, oh, I don't want to buy a Kia Rio today. Like, I don't understand. Like, right. why why are we why are we going down this avenue? But then you hear a metal song and you're like, there are so many words in this song that I don't I haven't I haven't read into properly. Like you could hear yeah. a, you hear a metal song for the first time, right? You can't take it all in, you have to listen to it again. Because like yeah. like the lyrics are usually very, very uh, intricate. Yeah, and they're usually absolutely. about something very, very, uh, very uplifting or very dark at the same time. So it's kind of like you have to then go back and read into it a bit more. And you're like, okay. And the progression of the music, you know, it's not a structured thing. So metal is not always, you know, uh, intro, chorus, verse, intro, chorus, verse, breakdown, end. It's not always yeah. like that. You know what I mean? Sometimes it starts with a breakdown. Like sometimes you can have a verse into a chorus that goes for like the whole length of the song and it ends. Like it, you just don't know. It's not as structured as structured as rock and roll is. You know what I mean? It's a progression yeah, of rock and, and roll. And I want to say I want to say Slaughter to Prevail has a couple songs where it's just like chaos. as soon as the star song starts up, it's right into a breakdown. That's what I mean. It's chaos. And that's like yeah. the thing is though, like with the progression of music in general, like you see the the breakout of EDM music. And you see the breakout of like dubstep and all this kind of stuff. There's no yeah. structure to that. There's no structure right. to that. Like it it, 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 it starts at one and then ends, but you know, you're not sure where the middle is or what's going on with it. It just kind of goes, yeah. you know what I mean? So it's just like, okay, this, this works. It's this just works. all over the place. It's just one of those things. Yeah. So what did we, what was that? Number two? Number two. All so right. Number so one. number one. Number one, I got to split, dude, because, you know, at the moment, I am loving everything that Lorna Shore puts out. Oh, yeah, that's a good choice. But if, you know, my number one, if I had to give it to a lengthened band that I've been listening to for years, mm. Motionless and White. Oh, choice. You know, I love their, their White Wedding cover. Yeah. That was yeah. really it, enjoyable. Yeah, and their music, I mean, dude, Chris Motionless just puts so much emotion into everything he does. He does. And it's, it sounds good. You know, they've got their softer, you know, slower songs, and then they've got their other songs that just, like you say, make you want to headbutt a wall. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I honestly, like, I, it's, it's funny how they, and they, have, they have a lot of melody to their songs, too. So, like, um, yeah, there'll absolutely. be a lot of uh, melodic ballad sort of songs mixed in with other heavy stuff so it's kind of like it's, it's it's like a different feel you know 
Yeah, which yeah, I love, which absolutely. I love. Um, and sometimes it's both in the same song. It's real heavy, and then the end is just slow and steady. That's it. I love that. Akai, thank you for the five gifted subs. Um, you literally came in, said hello, dropped five, and then said goodbye. I'm out. Beers. Okay. <laughs> we'll love you, bro. <laughs> cheers for the. That's cheers a proper hello and a proper goodbye. Yeah, right he's there. just uh, he does that sometimes. <laughs> he's a fucking legend. Um, look, I I could talk metal literally all day, literally all yeah. fucking day. Like I, um, for me, like my bands, bro. It's got to be. It's always Parkway Drive. It's always gonna be Parkway Drive. It's always oh, yeah. been Parkway Drive. Like I am just I, every single time they bring out something new. Um, it's same, it's the same, same, but different. It always changes. Do you know what I mean? Right. It's not like, it's not like, you know, for me, I, uh, one of the bands that I like the least, and this is going to be very controversial, but it is Disturbed, right? Now, Dis- Disturbed, yeah. Disturbed started out when I was in high school. Disturbed was a really good band. Like, I really enjoyed it. I had, I had, um, the first, al- one of the first albums I ever bought was Prayer. Like, I really digged all that stuff. But every single time they bring in an album, it sounds exactly the same to me. Like, it's, yeah. it's not, you know, I'm not an artist. I'm not a, I'm not a songwriter. Like I'm a musician, but I'm not, I'm not someone who's in a band or anything like that. Like I play, but I'm not someone who's like, you know, formulating, you know, uh, albums on a, on a, on a, you know, bi-yearly basis, but it just all sounds the same to me as a, as someone who's a listener of music. And that kind of thing is like, for me, it's like they're stuck. You know, they're stuck in the same shit over and over again. And if you like that, that's great. If you like them, you like them. I, I have no yeah. problem with that. And, and they bring out the same thing. And you know what? People buy because they're like, I know what to expect. But I love, what I love about music and I love about bands is the progression of that band. When they change right. to do something different. And like, when I listen to Parkway Drive, from when they started, like when I first started listening to them, when I brought out their EP to now... It's just wild. Like the progression yeah. of that band, it just gets better and better and better. And that's why I love them so much. Because like And that's one band that's always eluded me seeing them live. Yeah. I've never gotten to catch Parkway Drive live. It, the energy in their mosh pits when they drop karma or something like that, you you can't you can't create that. Yeah. You can't create that. You can't re recreate that. You have to be there. You have to be yeah. there. Because you feel it. You feel the um, you feel the energy in the room build. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. you know, you know when you're in a good mosh pit, and like you can oh, feel yeah. you can feel the energy people are creating around you. Like everybody just, it's like it's like a vibration before an earthquake. Like everybody, yeah. everybody is sitting there. They're all ready to go. They're like, okay, we know what's coming. We know what's coming, but we're still not prepared <laughs> for it when it happens. So like it's like it's like we can feel the tremor in the ground. It's like, yep, we all we're all here. We're ready. We know what's coming. We know what's coming. We know what to do. And then it hits, and you're like. I don't fucking know what's going on. Like, you know, it's just, it's crazy wild. Like, some of the greatest nights ever, bro. It's so good. Probably one of the best pits I've ever been in was uh, the Ghost Inside. Oh, yeah, they're so good. Their pits are so good, dude. They're so good. Dude, I remember seeing the Ghost Inside at a a pub uh, Mm. in uh, in Newcastle. And, like, it's called the Cambridge Hotel. And, uh, basically... It, it's the it starts, the the floor space in there is enough to hold like maybe a hundred people. Like it is it is not it's not big by any chance. Yeah, yeah. There was like two hundred and fifty people squeezed into this room, right? <laughs> and there was no barriers, no barricades. The stage was literally on the ground. Like it was just they. Oh, they dude, those are the best, bro. When the state when they're playing on the ground, yeah, that's absolutely the best. They were playing in the in the mosh pit. Like it was it was they were so like the the, the mosh pit had to be pushed onto the stage. There was too many people in it. So, like, basically, yeah. they were playing, and the fans were just sitting there next to them. Like, it was just... It was wild. And it was, you know how much it was to get in? Ten bucks. Woo! Ten you know bucks I mean? to the ghost inside, bro. That would be amazing. Yeah, and it was just, like... It was just so much fun. It was just, like... And they, they played with Prom Queen as well, which was just even more wild. So, those two oh, bands... Wow. Those two bands in, in a pub, everyone's got a beer in their hand, and it's ten bucks. Dude, on like amazing. a fucking Saturday night, it's just and, and we all come out of there and we just I had, I had I didn't even have enough energy left to get in the cab. I was so tired. <laughs> like, it was just so much like because you know how you know if you're in a really really tight mosh pit, you're always pushing. Yeah, you're always yeah. Pushing and like you fuck after a while, you feel like you're having a workout. Like you know because yeah, all your yeah. muscles are starting to hurt because people are pushing against you. Like you know 
you're trying to drink your beer at the same time and like there's shit going everywhere and you know there's bottles there's been, a, there's been a few cans. shows that i've left where i just walk out and like you say man it's like you're drained yeah and you just go home and sleep for like 12 hours after <laughs> dude i went to a i went to a um a thy art is murder concert right and mm -hmm. um so they opened they opened for parkway drive at byron Ooh. bay high school right and yeah. I went to this high school event, right? And I was like, I came out of that gig. I was missing it, my shirt. Okay, that was one. Cause, cause someone tore it off me. Like literally <laughs> tore it off me. Um, I had blood all over my back cause someone's nose had busted on my back, right? So someone head first, nice. went head first into the back of me and this went bang, just all over the back of me. I was sweating so much. So I got back in the car cause my mate was like sleeping in the car waiting for me. And I come back and I was just like, literally, I'm talking, no, no clothes, just covered head to toe in blood. And he's just like, what the fuck did you just come from? <laughs> like, what happened? He's like, he's like, did somebody die? I was like, no, I just had a great time, but I was so incredibly exhausted. I basically- Did you, did you get mugged in the back alley? Do I need to go beat somebody up <laughs> he's for like, you? what the fuck just happened? And he's just like, I'm like, I don't know, bro, but it's one of the greatest gigs I've ever been to in my life. Like we, like they literally broke the hall to the point where they had to pay the school to build it again. Like they, it, the, the stage cracked down the middle and like, cause it was, oh, made, of, it was made of timber. And so the stage cracked cause everyone was jumping around and smashing shit and, and the walls started to fucking crumble. And it was like, they shook the whole thing to the foundation and they basically, you know what they did? They paid the school to rebuild the hall. After that's they, amazing, like, dude. that's, that's crazy. I love it. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? I mean, look, in saying that story time, bro, what's, what's, what's the gig? What's the, what's the, the, the metal moment? What's the moment that you had as a metalhead that you remember forever? God, there's been so many. Um, I, dude, I'd have to say, like, <laughs> my first pit, bro. In Dallas, um, I followed a show from Houston up to Dallas because uh, I made friends with a band that was playing it. Mm -hmm. And so we, I, I followed them from Houston to Dallas. And um, and for some reason, I don't know why, but Dallas was the first time I really threw down in a pit. Yeah. So I, I don't know if it's because, you know, I was away from home and it, I don't know if it felt more comfortable or what. So, you know, the, the, the band that I made friends with was on stage and they're building up to a breakdown and it's one of my favorite breakdowns from the from the band at that time mm -hmm. and so i'm like this is it this is my moment <laughs> <laughs> this is the and one so i get in the pit man and i'm right on the like i'm, I'm towards the back of the pit because i'm like i'm gonna stay back here just in case and so you know i start doing my bouncing around and running back and forth and to me that breakdown hit like a hammer on concrete and I just lost it, man. And I throw my hands back, and then I kick back with as much force as I can. I mean, just boom. And, dude, there was this poor girl just standing right behind me, and I kicked her dead square in the middle of the chest. Oh, no. And knocked her probably five feet backwards. And I just turned around, and I go, Oh, my God, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And so I went and picked her up, man. I, I picked her up off the ground. And I'm like, are you okay? Like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I, I pick her up and, like, put my arm around her shoulder and, like, walk her away from the crowd. And she's like, no, no, I'm good. I'm fine. I'm fine. You not, you, it just knocked the wind out of me. I was like, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I'm so sorry. And she goes, it's my fault. You know, I wasn't paying attention. And I'm like, no, it was my fault. I kicked you. <laughs> That's, and so, that's like, awesome. I walked her over to a bench and sat her down, and I, like, went over to the vendor and grabbed, like, two bottles of water and brought them back to her. I'm like, here's some water. Like, are you, are you sure you're okay? <laughs> like, she was fine, man, but, dude, I had never felt so horrible in my entire life. <laughs> but, dude, she was cool, and, like, later on after the night, after the show, I saw her again getting ready to leave, and I just checked her, like, you sure you're good? You're fine? She's like, yeah, I'm good now, like. You know, I'll probably have a little bruise, but she's like, I'm fine now. Like, there, it's no big deal. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, cool. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? The, the, the thing I love, too, about, like, people who listen to metal, who get into mosh pits and stuff like that, is just, like, they're always so kind to each other. Even though yeah. they're all spin heel kicking everybody in the head. Um, everybody, <laughs> everybody comes out of their best friends. Like, they all, everybody knows what's coming. It's all baked into the cake for people who listen to metal, right? We all oh, go yeah. in there expecting to get fucked up. So we're all like, we're going in there. 
Uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna headbutt each other in the head, but later on I'm buying you a drink because like you know what we're having a good time with because the music is what brings it out and like it's it's just it's expected. So like if someone yeah. does go down, if you ever see this in a mosh pit, you see someone go down, you watch how many people pick that person up. That's what Absolutely. I love about metal music, bro. Like there'll probably be five or six people that completely stop what they're doing and scoop that person off the floor and make sure they're good. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So like I've seen people go under in mosh pits who are like maybe just a little bit too short for the for the for what's going on and they go under and you just see everyone just push back uh, where that yeah. person goes under and they hold each other so that people can't come in because you got to be it's like ring awareness you know every every yeah. single person it knows what's going on so every single person now now pushes away from that even though it's pitch black and the music is blaring and no one can yeah. see shit we know what's going on and so that person well, gets you'll, picked and up. you'll see and you'll see everybody link arms so nobody can break that chain until that's that what I mean. that's crazy forward. right and that's the community that i love like i love the metal community because of the people that are just so kind like I've, i it's funny how you go in it's 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 all about like um it's all about uh the way people see things right so you go into a room full of people wearing black right full of people wearing black chains hanging off their pants metal <laughs> shoes on uh you know, nose rings and tattoos and, and beards everywhere. And they're all just fighting the shit out of each other and, you know, having a great time. And, and that's less dangerous than if you go to an EDM concert uh, in the middle of a fucking, like, festival park, you know, with a whole bunch of people who aren't moshing at all. Like, that's... It's, it's less dangerous to be in a metal mosh pit than it is to be at a festival for, like, dance music. Like, yeah, that's absolutely. what's wild Like you me. said, at the end of the day, we're all just watching out for each other. Do you know what I mean? And like, I've seen, like, it's funny how, like, festivals are always like, oh, yeah, you know, whenever you hear on the news, it's always the, it's always the dance festival that there's an issue. Whether someone yeah. got stabbed or someone, you know, you know, had, had an overdose or whatever it might yeah. be. You never hear that out of a metal mosh pit, you know what I mean? Like, you never hear yeah, anything no. like that. And it's like, if someone does, like, break a toe or someone breaks a nose or something, it's fine. Like, it's all, it's, it's like, okay, well, like, you know, the, we'll take you over here to EMT, we'll get you sorted out. And, you know, to have, here's a glass of water and here's a beer and let's get on with it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just... Yeah, but, but absolutely. At, an, at a concert, at an EDM concert, you've got everyone, like, just shooting up and fucking getting fucked up. And, you know, the amount of times I see drugs yeah. at metal concerts, it just... It's it's not even, like, few and far if between. You, if you do see like, drugs at a metal concert, nine times out of ten, it's going to be a joint that's being passed around to yeah, everybody. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> like, if I, I've seen... I've been in, like... So I was in a Bring Me Horizon uh, mosh pit, right? And yeah. there was, like... Maybe there's maybe ten people there, just all just doing pass puff, and you know, like, <laughs> like, like, weed is illegal in this country, <laughs> but like, right. but like, nobody cares. Like, everyone's just passing around, yeah, like, having a great time. Yeah, like, yeah. We're gonna smoke it whether you want us to or not. <laughs> drinking beers and smoking inside, like, they don't care. Like, you know, but if I go to an EDM concert, I see people just popping pills and just overdosing, and you know. Then, and then no one knows what they do. They're all standing out in the sun with their clothes on. Like, it's just, it's wild, bro. Like, you know, like... Dude, I've, I, and I used that. to work at a uh, venue that hosted, I mean, tons of... August Burns Red, Bring Me the Horizon. Um, ah, we had so many bands come through. Acacia Strain, Amir, Devil Wears Prada, A Day to Remember. Mm. I mean, tons of bands. And, dude, I can't tell you how many times I'd be sitting, like, at the front of the stage and I'd get that smell blowing across the room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Somebody's here to have a good time. <laughs> this is the thing though, like they're there to for the music though. Do you know what I mean? They're yeah, there for the absolutely. music. They're there for the vibe. You know, they're there for the culture of it all. And I feel like that's just lost in some other genres. Yeah, and you know, anytime I smelled it, dude, I I didn't care. But I'm like, by the time I find that thing, it's gonna be smoked down to the bottom of it anyway. So why even yeah. try? <laughs> it's, but it's harmless, bro. Like this is the thing. Like you know, you're not gonna, you know, no one's gonna, no one's ever OD'd on weed. Like you know, like right. you know what I mean. Like it's not gonna be an issue. Like you know, I think the most, the most issues I've ever seen in a metal concert when it comes to like drug and alcohol is people just get too drunk and they pass out somewhere. Like that's that's yeah. that's sort of the only thing. Like, but then like you know, it just it just it's just a different culture. And people and, and like I said, with appearances, if you walked into a room, if you'd never heard music in your life, right? And you walked into a room full of people wearing, you know, what metalheads wear, listening to that. And then you walked yeah. into another room and there's a whole bunch of people in like, you know, fluoro outfits, like dancing around EDM music. Which one do you think you'd be safer at? Metal you know? concert by far. Yeah. But like the, the, the person coming off the street doesn't know that. 
They take yeah, they take the appearance. They're like, oh my god, there's all these people with tattoos yeah. and beards and wearing black t-shirts. That looks scary, bro. And they're listening to metal right. music. It's like, but then you walk into these other ones, like rainbows and butterflies, and you know all this kind of shit. Yeah. And then they're listening to like some dance music. It's like, yeah, this seems like more safe, but you're actually safer at the metal concert, which is wild. <laughs> bro, <laughs> funny funny story about the venue I worked at. Um, so we we were like a we weren't a huge venue. We, uh, it was a little place called Java Jazz. And it started out as, as a coffee shop. Yeah. And um, the original building they were in was quite literally a coffee shop. And then they had like a little st- corner stage where they'd have people come in and play like acoustic guitar or stuff like that. And, you know, every once in a while they'd let, you know, some local kids and their metal bands come come through and play. And then, you know, eventually it blew up and, um, you know, the owner was like, you know, I think we can do this on a bigger scale and maybe get bigger bands in. So they went and looked at this other venue and it was it was much much bigger. Mm-hmm. Um so you know they bought that venue um and I went to work for them probably probably 5 maybe 5 years if if even that long after they bought it. But this venue that they bought so we're in the corner and right next door to us dude <laughs> Is a full on swingers club, <laughs> <laughs> and so man, like we'd be out there working security because they didn't, you know, they're they're they have their clientele and they didn't like when like our patrons would go park in their parking spot, so we'd have to go out there and like tell people where to park. And dude, you'd see these cars pull up with these old men get out and like be some young like twenty five year old girl in a tight skirt, like and they're getting ready to walk in. And you're like, oh, I already know what's happening there. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> And so, you know, one night we we had a big show coming through. I can't remember who it was, but it was a big night. And so, yeah, I think four of us got put on parking lot detail where we're out there telling people where to park and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And this girl, I guess, that worked at that club came walking out and she had four cups of hot cocoa. And she goes, hey... You know, I saw you guys out here, and it, it was cold that night. I mean, I, I didn't even bring a hoodie. I was freezing to this because I didn't realize it was going to get that cold. And she's like, hey, guys, you know, I see you guys out here, and it's cold, and we appreciate what y'all are doing for us. So, you know, we thought we'd bring you some hot cocoa. And so we all grab it and kind of look at each other. <laughs> <laughs> My friend Rob is standing right there, and she walks away, and I go, hey, Rob, you drink yours first. If you pass out, I'll know not to drink mine. <laughs> Oh, but you no, know, awesome. he didn't pass out, and the hot chocolate was good, and it warmed us up. So <laughs> that's that's really cool, right? But I'm that's like, funny. like at the same time, I'm like, dude, what swinger club is serving hot chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. Oh my! But God. that was by far my favorite point of that venue's time was when we were in that building, dude. I mean, um, you know, most venues make flyers for their shows that are coming up. Um, and do flyers are the messiest things ever. Cause you know, where do you find them at the end of the night on the floor, in yeah. the parking lot, in the trash. And we have to clean all those up every night. Yeah. So instead of doing flyers, um, we had this graffiti artist that would come in and actually graffiti the shows that were coming in on the walls. Oh, okay. And so once the shows were over, um, uh, yeah, I think they had somebody come in and pressure wash those off. And then he'd spray the next lineup of shows coming through. And he would be able to fit, like, I mean, we'd have six to seven months of shows coming up, just graffiti sprayed down the wall. And it was amazing. So, you know, at the end of, you know, some shows, you'd have kids standing back taking pictures of the wall so they could keep a track of what date, what bands were coming. That's a genius idea. Like, not only does it save paper and save the hassle of having to clean it up, but it's actually, like, artistic to the point where people actually want to see it. So like yeah, that's, yeah. that's actually it, it was yeah. great, man. It worked out so good. Yeah, love that. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you, like speaking of art, um, the tattoos. You have an obsession with tattoos. I do like tattoos. I do, in <laughs> fact, love tattoos. How many tattoos you got? Oh, God, I've lost point at this. Lost count at this point. <laughs> I've I got seen a few, you, man. I've seen them. So in I've the got Discord. I've got Darth Vader going up on this arm here. Yeah. Um, which I still need to get finished. Um, I, I think I sent a picture in Discord of my uh, Pikachu tattoo down on my thigh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw that one. <laughs> that was fantastic. Uh, I've got a star on the back of my leg. Uh, 
I've got a football team logo tattooed on the other side of my leg. I did that one for a friend who was trying to actually get his apprenticeship and he needed to tattoo somebody. So I was like, I mean, you could throw my t football team on my leg. I'm like, yeah. all right. Why not? Um, I used to actually have a Jason Voorhees tattooed over here on the side of my neck. Okay. Um, I've, I've recently got it removed just due to work and trying to be a little more professional at work. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, stuff like that. Um, you know, I'm definitely looking at getting more tattoos in the future. Yeah. Um, you know, my ribs are tattooed from the armpit all the way down to my waist. That sounds painful. So, that one felt like they were cutting me in half when they tattooed that one. Yeah, was that the worst one? Oh, by far, dude. By far. Yeah. I, I sat through, uh, I sat through a six and a half hour session of getting my ribs tattooed. Oh, dude. I feel like, like, as you talk about it, I feel it. Like, you yeah, know, like, like, it's just like, oh, <laughs> it's, it's just rough, like, dude, it's, it's real rough getting your ribs done. Like, uh, anytime I see somebody about to get their ribs done, I'm like, dude, you better pray to whatever gods you pray to. <laughs> that shit's going to hurt. <laughs> it's going to be the worst six hours of your life. <laughs> yeah, my mom likes to call my, uh, my Jason Voorhees a, ta a pizza tattoo because she said it looked like a pizza. Oh, really? Which it did not. It looked like a Jason Voorhees tattoo. Yeah, but she'll say it's pizza <laughs> every yeah. time, every time. So what was the first one you ever got? The first tattoo I ever got. Oh, God, why would you ask me about that? <laughs> <laughs> because it's always the one you regret. <laughs> always. <laughs> I've never I've never ever said to anyone, hey, what was the first tattoo you ever got? And they said it was a good one. Like, it's always, it's always, it's <laughs> like, a, it's like a test. not a good one. It's like a test tattoo. <laughs> so the first tattoo I ever got was the Slipknot logo tattoo, and I got it done in the shittiest tattoo parlor I think I've ever been in. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine what it looks like. I got like it done too. on my right arm, and it was so bad, dude. He blew out so many lines. Like, half the color didn't even take to my arm. Like, it fell out during, uh, oh, no. during the healing process. It was the most janky shit tattoo you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> oh, my God. You still have it? Um... That's actually what the Darth Vader is going there for, is to cover oh, that see. up. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you might do that. That's wild, bro. That's funny Dude. as fuck. Oh my god. And you know, I'm 18 years old. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go get my first tattoo. I'm getting a Slipknot tattoo, bro, because I'm badass like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just fucking god-awful. <laughs> bro, this is the reason I never, ever get I got a tattoo. is because I know <laughs> that as soon as I get it, I'll be like, I don't like this. And I'll like, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm just, I'm the most... So I'm both the most decisive and indecisive person you'll ever meet. Like I know what I yeah. want and I know what I want and I'm, and I'm going to push to get it. But at the same time, um, when it comes to tattoos, I've always had this thing where I love tattoos, by the way. I love tattoos. I think yeah. they're amazing things to have. I'll, I have. Every single person that I know has a tattoo. Like my mates, some of my mates are literally covered from their head to their toes in tattoos. Yeah. So I love tattoos. But I... Like we still go to the tattoo expo every year, like to go and see all the tattoo artists and like see their see what they've got going on and see the people. Right. Get, like the, when you walk into a room, like a, a warehouse full of people, and all you can hear is the buzzing of tattoo guns. It's probably one of the nicest fucking sounds. I don't know why, but it's just like it's like soothing to a point where you, you yeah, smell I, the pain. I love the sound of a tattoo yeah. gun, dude. It's like one of my favorite sounds. <laughs> you can smell you can smell the ink and you can smell the like the gun going and the. And like, yeah. it's, it's, it's a nice, it's a nice thing. You look around, you're looking at all these tattoos. It's great. But for me, um, when it comes to like, you know, getting my own tattoo, I have been contemplating for years and years and years on what to get. And every time I pick one, I change my mind. And so for my problem is, is that I'm so indecisive when it comes to that, that I just couldn't ever get one because I'm like, if I get one, it's on me and I'll be like, look, I don't like it. Like, I, I just have this feeling that it's just going to not, you know, I probably just have to take the step to get one but then i also know i have a very addictive personality so once i get one i'll get 50. so i'm like you know what i'll just i'm just not gonna get any <laughs> Dude, I'll, I'll tell you right now tattoos are one of the most addicting thing you will ever do in your life once you get the feel of that first one yeah. all you want to do is go get your next one <laughs> it's wild right it's it's insane and i'm sure you can tell by my pikachu tattoo that sometimes i really don't give a shit what's on my body <laughs> no <laughs> yeah you just like look it's me. Do you know what I mean? Like, as long as it reflects you, it doesn't matter what it is, right? It's just every single, like, you always say to people, like, oh, okay, what does this tattoo mean? What does this tattoo mean? They don't always have to mean something. They can always just, yeah, they can like, just be tattoos. Like, you're just like, no, I just got this one because I felt like it. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, like, to... I just, like, I literally just sometimes want to get a tattoo just to get a fucking tattoo. Like, that's all it comes down to. It's like, some people will be like, oh, this is for my grandmother, or this is for, you know, the, the, the person I loved in a past life, or something real deep like that. And you're just like, I just got a Pikachu tattoo because I like Pokemon. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like... And I was even drunk. Better, dude, like, it's, tattoo. it's like, it's yeah. not even a real, like, it's not even like a serious tattoo. It's like no, a meme. It's, yeah, do you know what I mean? It's just like, I just got this because I thought it was cool. Like, you know, you don't hear people say that anymore because most people are like, this is a sentimental value to me. This really meant something. You know, I got this because I really thought through and I had a design for 10 months. And you're like, I walked into a parlor when I was drunk and I was like, that one here, let's go. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that looks like fun. Um, and that's, and that's, that, some, and that's something I would totally do, dude. I would totally just walk into a parlor and be like, I like that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Put that on my butt cheek. <laughs> like, just like, right. <laughs> like, cause you know what? I'm never going to see it, but the poor person was walking behind me. <laughs> like, they'll have I've, had, to see I've it. had people <laughs> dare me to get tattoos on my ass and I just haven't done it yet. One, one of these days it'll probably happen though. <laughs> I reckon that would be painful though. They reckon, I don't like, know. I need a lot of meat back there, so it probably wouldn't yeah, be too bad. Not. Maybe not. The least painful like the, one would be uh, what on your shoulder, right? the back of my calf, you know, because you got that calf muscle there, dude. Didn't hurt at all. Like, no. a Pikachu tattoo on my thigh didn't hurt whatsoever. Like, those no. were all butter tattoos. But, like, like on the ribs where you got, like, no skin and it's almost just bone right there. Nope. Woo! Nope. Pops. That was rough. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, uh, and the one on the side of my neck, that one, uh, that one stung a little as well. Mm, I can but I think I think that one was more psychological than anything, uh, because I could hear the buzzing of the needle in my head. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think it was just I think it was more psychological than it actually was painful. <laughs> yeah, it's all in your head, right? Literally. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude! That's amazing. Um, but yeah, dude, I got my first one on at fifteen and had to wait three years and said acid. That's wild. First one at fifteen. I didn't get my first. I was eighteen when I got my first one. Yeah. Yep. Well, of course, that's the legal age you have to be in <laughs> Texas to get a tattoo. You have to be 18, so. Really? I didn't know. Yep. That. See, I don't, there's no age limit pretty much for that. We um, Really? Man, I should have came to Australia when I was young. <laughs> I think it's 16, but I think most people just get them anyway. Yeah, yeah. Like, because um, everything, everything in this country is a little bit different when it comes to, like, restrictions and stuff. Like, you can drink from 18 here. Like you can, um, you can smoke like cigarettes from like 16, like, yeah, was... they, they upped, they, so drinking age here has always been 21, but they upped the smoking limit to 21 as well, yeah. which is wild. So yeah, it's crazy how laws differ like all across the world. Isn't that wild though? Like you, you think of all the places in the world, right? We're all on the same planet. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like we're all, we're all still human beings. But we all we all like under different guys rules like it's it's kind of like it's a weird concept that i've always thought like about like it's like the only thing that separates most countries is 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 a border that doesn't exist right do you know what yeah, I mean? it's an imaginary line that somebody drew up and said this is how this is where we end this society and we start another one yeah and it's like but then like what what what, what happens on that one side of that line could be totally different from what happens on the opposite side of that line in so yeah. many different ways that it boggles the mind like it is that's, yeah, the, that's wild the, to me. The, the craziest place i think about when it comes to like borders and countries is is africa dude they have so many countries just in one continent it's insane yeah 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 and they're all different like incredibly different because like you know you look at america and you know we're all in this massive not continent because we don't take the take up the whole continent but this little section of continent but 50 states spread out through there whereas in africa it's literally countries <laughs> i know why it's, it's wild it's, it's, it's wild but that's the thing that's what america could be like you know yeah in, in the not too distant future to be honest like the, with, yeah. with everything going on in that country and like you know i love i love america like i have nothing but good things to say about that country i love going there i love being there i love the people that live there but like there is so much divide across all oh, yeah. of the country that, that I, I see it. And we, in Australia, that's not really the case. Like in Australia, like everybody, like you'll notice with the Australian continent, like it's, it's, it's massive, right? Right. But there's nothing in the middle. 
Like it's, yeah, it's like yeah, everybody. Uh, yeah, like because most of your cities and stuff are on the. Uh, everybody, coast. everybody lives on the coast. Do you know why? Because it's not as hot. You know what I mean? So like, oh, it's, really? it's the weather and like not that, not just that, but agriculture wise and all that kind of stuff. Like you can't grow anything in the middle of a desert, bro. Like you know, it's like yeah. so everybody sort of like migrates to the coast, which is where you want to live, because obviously you get the sea breeze, you get the ocean. You know, you get yeah. all and all the major cities that we have are all on the coast of the continent, right? And then in the middle, it's just literally nothing. It's just millions and millions and millions of like hectares of nothing. It's wild. Like, you know, some, some people who have like land and farms and stuff in the middle of the country, it's like millions and millions of hectares wide. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like it's crazy big. And like, it's, it's, but then you think about it. It's like, you think about how big America is, right? Australia is the same size, relatively the same size as America. You think about yeah. that, right? And like, we have, we have 28 million people total. Wow. Okay. You think about that. There's more people in LA County than there is in fucking Australia. Like that's, yeah. you know, there's 73 million people just in California or something Dude, stupid California like that. Is so like, insanely big. It's unreal. Yeah. How yeah, big yeah. Is. That's what, that's what I mean. Like, you know, and then I think about that when I flew into LA for the first time. So I flew into LA for the first time and I, from, I come from Sydney, right? And Sydney is the biggest, the biggest like capital city that we have, right? Yeah. Uh, or the biggest city that we have. Um, and I, and I, and I fly from Sydney and we have like 8 million people in Sydney. Right. And that seems like a lot because we all kind of live on top of each other as it is. But then like, yeah. I, I fly into, I fly into uh, LA for the first time and I, I got out off the plane like 11 PM on like a Tuesday or something like that. The traffic and the amount of people that I, that were just hanging around at 11 PM on a Tuesday night was unreal. Yeah. It was unreal to me. Like I was, we were flying in and the lights from the city were enough to light up the moon. Like there was, there, it was just, I've never seen anything like it, bro. And I, and I came off, I came off the plane and into a cab on the way to, uh, to where I was staying in Beverly Hills. Right. And I was just like, this whole place is just something different. Like this is wild. Like I've never seen anything like it and I've never seen so many yeah, people madness, living right? in one place. And then I went to New York. I went oh, to New shit. York and I was just like, this is fucked. Like, this, this is actually fucked. Like, this is like, there's 11 million people living on this one tiny little island. And I'm just like, yeah. this is like something out of like some, some sort of prison break movie. Like there are so many people and, and the, and the rubbish everywhere. And, and, the, and like, I've never seen, like I, I was walking down like, like uh, 32nd or whatever at like yeah. three, four in the morning and the amount of rubbish on the sidewalk was just unreal. Like I was like, I couldn't believe it, bro. Like, and they're like, we have a rat problem. Like, well, I wonder why, like, you know, like, <laughs> like fuck, like you put all your rubbish on the sidewalk. Like it's not even, here. and they don't put anything in bins. It's just all bags of stuff because like they yeah. don't have enough room on the sidewalk for bins. So like yeah. they, they just chuck all the bags of rubbish down in the chutes and it just pops out on the sidewalk. I'm just like, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Like, <laughs> I, I just, I you couldn't seen? even. Houston is definitely not like that, dude. If you come to Houston at like 11 midnight, something like that, like there will hardly, there won't be a lot of people out on the roads. No, but like New York, LA, Vegas. Oh, oh Vegas, dude, Vegas never sleeps. <laughs> Vegas is one of the most fucked up places I've ever been. I, I literally, <laughs> I hated it, dude. Like I, I'm all about that. Like I was, I see, I'm a, uh, I'll put it this way. The first thing that I noticed when I was in Vegas that really pissed me off was the smoking inside thing. Like I, oh, yeah. I couldn't understand that at all. Cause in Australia, smoking inside was banned years and years and years ago. Like, like I'm talking decades ago. Like you can't yeah. smoke inside in pubs, in clubs, in, 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 in restaurants. You can't do any of that. Right. Um, right. And you haven't been able to do that for decades and decades. Right. It was like the eighties. Yeah, that's kind of the same here in a lot of places. They have designated areas in pubs where you have to go and smoke, right? And and that's yeah. that's that's what I came from. And I walk into I was staying at the Link Hotel and Casino, right? And I right. came down the lift and I walked out and it was just a haze of fucking cigarette smoke, like yeah. in the on the casino floor. And I, and I immediately just felt ill, bro. And I spent like the entire time, like I stayed there three days, right? 
It's three days, like the longest three days, because I was just like, I, I thought I was like, well, we'll just get to go party. Like, I was, it's Vegas, right? I'm just gonna go party and get fucked up. I'm traveling by myself, by the way, which is like always do. And yeah. I, I'm so like, I'm partying, like I'm traveling around bars and stuff and nightclubs and hanging out and you know gambling, and drinking and like having a good time. And um, I honestly just felt like I was so out of place. Like I was just like, this is a this is like a giant adult playground that I'm not I'm not used to. Like I could get in trouble here. Like I don't know how I'm supposed to act. Like I don't know what to do. But like, then that's what Vegas is at the end of the day. Vegas is just literally Disney World for adults. That's what I mean. That's what I thought it was like. And like I had some pretty wild experiences in Vegas. Not good ones, mind you. Yeah. Like that just that just made me like not want to go back there. And yeah. um, then I went to Nashville. Right now, Nashville. Uh, I went to Nashville and uh, and I, I went down, you know, to uh, to the main to the main drag in Nashville, uh, where all the where all the country bars are and like you know where all the the dance bars are and and and, yeah. and, and all that. That was probably one of the greatest places that I've ever been in my entire life. Like that was the most fun I've ever had in any one place because like it, it is not only is it 24 hours a day pretty much of just like people just laughing and having a beer and just dancing and but and, and it but it's bands 24 7 like it's just a revolving door for music and like yeah, i dude, nashville's nashville's absolutely beautiful dude nashville in, is amazing that's what i mean but in vegas i felt i didn't feel safe in vegas i didn't feel safe because it was like you know i didn't really feel like i was like fit in very much when I was in Nashville, bro, I felt the safest I've ever felt in any place where there was a lot of drinking and stuff. Like, I literally, like, we were throwing axes at walls and I felt fine. Like, there was people walking around with open carry and, like, just, like, you know, having a laugh and giving me a high five. Like, I literally, I just, I lit I was so, so happy to be there. I would literally go back in a heartbeat, bro. Like, yeah, I mean, the axe, the, uh, the axe throwing has become a very big thing here, man. People love going to axe throwing bars. Yeah, which is wild. Like, I... I, w I went into the to the axe throwing right, and I was me and my mate who were, who were there because he flew over from uh, from Australia to meet me in Nashville, right? It was like yeah. halfway through my trip uh, a couple of years ago, and like he was like, "Oh, I'm gonna meet you in Nashville. Let's get let's get fucked up." I was like, "Yeah, fuck yeah, let's do that." Anyway, we walk into this bar right, the sports bar in Nashville, um, and uh, we walk in and there's axe throwing, and I'm like, "What is this?" And we were both completely <laughs> shit faced. Like I'm talking, like we are uh, been drinking bourbon for like twelve hours. Like we were just, oh, <laughs> we were just off our heads drunk. Like to the point where like I kept dropping my drink, and like you know he was just like fumbling shit out. He dropped his phone in the toilet, I think, at one stage. Like it was, it was just like the funniest shit ever. We walk into this place, and the guys, the guys, like you want to throw some axes? He can clearly see that we are both fucked, and I'm just like, okay. And we've got these videos, and he's like, yeah, let's do it. And like, we've got these videos of us, like, bur bourbon in one hand, axe in the other hand, throwing them at a wall, and just, like, not even hitting it. Like, <laughs> and, like, my mate's, like, you know, he's, like, kissing it for good luck, and, like, throwing it over his head and shit. And it's just, like, I'm, like, who gives drunk people axes? Like, you know, and, th and that's just, like, a culture thing for me, because, like, when you're in Australia, right, if you even look slightly intoxicated in an Australian pub, they kick you out. Like if you if you wow. if you if you go in after a certain time, you're not allowed in. You know what I mean? Like you know, it's it, crazy. It, it, it's like there is so like the rules for drinking and going out in this country are so strict that the nightlife is literally just completely died. Like to the point yeah. where people just don't even bother going anymore. The drinks are so expensive; it's not worth it. Like, there's no dive bars here. There's nothing like that. Like all the bars here are just incredibly expensive. Um, the restrictions on what you can do in the bars is to the point where it's like no fun anymore. And like there's curfews and there's lockouts and there's all this other stuff. And wow. people, people are like, what the fuck, why do I want to go out and spend a hundred dollars on drinks that I could buy for 50 bucks at the, at the bottle shop? Do you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. And then, and then have to put up with like people walking around me and like no one's having any fun. It's just like the music's terrible. It's like, no, I'm not going out. I'm not going to, I'm just going to stay home and invite my friends over. So like the culture here is so different. Whereas like when I was in Austin, I would go to sixth street and I'd just go to any bar in Austin. And I just have like, and like we would bar hop. We'd just be like, I'd be at one bar and like, oh, the band seems really good. And then someone would say to me, oh, there's another band playing next door. Like this person works there. And they're like, oh, there's another band playing next door. That's I really love good. Austin. I'm, a, I'm like, I'm all a right, I'll go there. 
but I never got checked for ID. Like I never, I never got told I was too drunk to be there. Like if I was drunk, they would be like, do you want a pizza? I was like, what the fuck is this? Like I was in a bar in, in Austin and I was like drinking and, and, the, and the lady was, I'm like, fuck, I'm hungry. But it was like in Australia, the food stops at nine. Yeah. So like, there's no food after nine. So like, they, it's like once you get drunk and it's say midnight or whatever, they just kick you out. They're like, get out, you're too drunk. It's like they don't like help you or anything. They don't, they don't try and do anything for you. They just say, get the fuck out. And if you are caught intoxicated in public, the police arrest you. It's fucking wild. Whereas like in Austin, I was like really pissed and I was really hungry. I was like, fuck, I need to get something to eat. And the lady behind the bar, she was just hanging out. She was like, oh, I can make you some pizza if you like. And I'm just like. <laughs> I was like, say what? She's like, yeah, I'll make you some pizza. I'm like, it's like 1 a.m. in this bar in the middle of Austin, and I'm pissed, and I'm like, I don't know where to go to get anything to eat. She's like, I'll make you some pizza. I was like, I've never, I've never, like, it was like a twilight zone to me. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, are you serious? She's like, yeah. I'm like, how much is that? She's like, oh, I like five bucks. I was like, what is, like, it's, it, it just blew, it blew my fucking, right now? it blew my tiny fucking mind. I was just like, I've never, I've never, I've ne it was just so nice. Like, I was just like, you do that for me? Like, are you serious? It's like, you go out of your way. You to go do that and, for me? You go out of your way to go and cook some food for me. Like, for no fucking reason other than just to like, you know, help me out. I was like, I never, I, I honestly, it was just a different concept to me. I'd never heard of that in my life. Like, if you, if you're a, a bar in, 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 in Australia and it's like, 9 30 10 o'clock and you're like oh, i just i just like to grab something from the kitchen they're like nah kitchen's closed fuck off like you know what i mean like but nah, I, kitchen's closed, fuck off. <laughs> yeah that's exactly what they would say kitchen's closed fuck off like i i but i mean I'm, I'm drunk at 1 a.m in a bar in austin that i've never been to and i have no idea what i'm doing and i'm just like i don't want another drink i would just like someone to eat and they're like yeah we'll make it for you i'm like that's just that's america bro and that's what i love about it it doesn't matter no, one what time of the, of one day of the most beautiful things about america man if the bars aren't serving food, you've got McDonald's that's open twenty four seven. Yeah. Um, what, what's the other place? Not IHOP, but uh, oh, it's another breakfasty food food place. I can't even think of the name of it. Denny's. Denny's, Denny's is yeah. open twenty four hours. <laughs> Bro, it's just crazy, right? And the food and everything is like I find that I find that food and drinks and stuff so much cheaper. You know what I mean? Like uh, yeah. in, in yeah. Australia, everything's taxed so high, and everything is like limited and stuff. Like. And everything's really expensive. Whereas like, I was in America, right? And I went to a dive bar in, I was a, it, was, it was a dive bar in Austin. Um, the Aussie Club, have you been there? It's uh, like called the Aussie Bar or something. The and Aussie I was bar? just like, and I was like, I went there because I was like, oh, is it an Australian bar? No, it's just the Austin Bar, it's an Aussie Bar, right? And like, I went, I went in there, I was like very confused. But anyway, I was like, I don't see any Australian flags on the wall. But anyway, I went in there, it was right. like just around the corner from where I was staying. And I, and I, and I walk in and the lady's standing there. She's like, Hey, what's up? I'm like, yeah, that much. She's like, I'm like, I'll just have a, a PBR. And she's like, I like, I like PBRs. I'm like, yeah, I'll have a PBR. She goes, would you like a 40? I'm like, what the fuck is a 40? Like, and, she, and she's just like, brings me this 40 can. I'm like, I've never seen this in my life. Like, this is, this is amazing. So I'm having a, I got a 40 can of PBR in front of me. And she goes, that'll be $3.50. I'm like, are you fucking having a laugh? Like $3.50. And she's like, yeah. I'm like, how do you make any money on that? She's like, no, it's fine. Like, we buy them in bulk. I'm like, and then Dude, she goes, that's the thing here with PBR is PBR is like, here is one of the cheapest beers you can get. It's wild. Like, without a doubt. <laughs> that's wild. And then she goes, what do you want? Some, do you want something to eat too? I'll get you something to eat. I was like, okay. It's like, well, like, and then she, instead of bringing me a menu, she's like, yeah, I'm going to try this. This is really good. I was like, all right. Like, you know, people don't, people in Australia don't do that. They just like, they bring you a menu and then they stand there and wait for you to pick something. Do you know what I mean? Like, and it's just like, I don't really know what's good. They're like, I don't know. It's just no, no one helps anyone in this country with anything. Nine times out of 10, no matter what restaurant you walk into, you can ask just about any server what's good on the menu and they will all have something that they, that they like. like on that menu and that That's they highly I mean. recommend. That's crazy to me. Like, and then, and then, and then people are like, oh, people in the service industry when it comes to it in America aren't getting paid enough. I'm like, People in the, the, if that's the case in America, they're not getting paid enough and they do a better job than the people who get paid too much in this country. What's the real problem? Like, like, you know yeah. what I mean? like, like maybe the problem is, it's just like people are too like, you know, they should be doing a better job. And, oh, and right. they, you know what I mean? Like, what the fuck, bro? I have people who serve in Australia and they're like, we get paid like, they get paid like monstrous amounts of money in hospitality. And they do literally nothing but insult you. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. cool. Like why am I like and there's no tipping in this country either. Like tipping is just like it was a new thing for me. 
Oh, tipping's a massive thing here. Yeah, but like I went to a bar, a bar and like, you know, even though it's yeah three bucks a beer or whatever it is, and I'm just like at the end of the night, I'm like, but if I get good service all night, I'm tipping. Like that's, but 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 I never had to do that in Australia. If you tip someone, they they look at you funny. They're like, what are you doing? Like, why are you giving me yeah. this money? Like. Whereas in America, you tip someone, they're like, oh, thank you so much. And then they, you know, bring you another beer. You're like, oh, thanks, cheers. Like, you know, but it's, it's just different. Yeah, and that's, that's like one of the special things about Vegas, dude. If you ever find yourself there, like, so they want to do everything they can to keep you in that casino, to keep you spending money in their oh, casino, yeah. which is why they, you know, allow the smoking. Because they don't want you to go outside. Because what if you go outside and see a casino across the street and you're like, oh, I'm going to go over there. Yeah, exactly. No. You keep your ass right in front of that slot machine. You play that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But like those waitresses, man, like you drop a 20 or 40, $40 in their jar, dude, your drink will never see the bottom. <laughs> no, no, it's crazy. <laughs> like uh, when I went for some reason, dude, when we went, I was like hopped on Bloody Marys. Like that's all I wanted to drink was Bloody Marys. <laughs> I don't know why. So we went to, uh, I think we were inside Caesar's Palace. And of course the lady comes around and like, you know, in Vegas you drink for free as long as you're gambling. Yeah. And uh, so she comes around and she goes, hey, what can I get you guys? I was like, well, I'll take a Bloody Mary, as odd as that sounds. I'll have a Bloody Mary and then my wife got a drink. And I dropped like 25 bucks in her tip jar. Yeah, my Bloody Mary never saw the bottom, dude. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. I'd get like three quarters of the way through my drink and she'd be like, oh, here you go, hon. Here's another one. I'm like... I'm not even finished with this one, but okay. <laughs> That's wild. And then this, so the, it's the opposite in this country. So like, if you're in a casino in here and you're too drunk, they kick you out. But like, the whole point is of you being in the casino in Vegas is to get you drunk so you spend more money. So like, it's yeah, a different absolutely. mentality. That's the what they want to do. The concept is completely the flipped. So like, yeah. I mean, I'm in Vegas and I'm drunk and I'm like, fuck, I like, I should be careful. I might get kicked out of here. No, they bring you another drink. I'm clearly intoxicated. I am like proper shit faced but but like I'm, I'm like like struggling and they're just like do you like another drink i'm just like <laughs> what the fuck is this like or it's like in australia you should trip over on the casino floor in australia they're kicking you out like you know I, it's, and that's wild to me it's like why wouldn't you want people who to be drunk because then you make more money like it's i'd be willing to bet the only way you're gonna get kicked out of a casino in vegas is if you start a fight like <laughs> yeah you take your pants off. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Like, if you're staying at that casino or that hotel that's attached to that casino. They're not kicking you out. And they and you pass out, they're probably just going to walk you to your room. <laughs> what happened to me? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I passed out at the bar and the, and the concierge carried me up to my house, to my room. <laughs> I was like, like I, I passed out at the bar, I fell asleep on the bar, like on a, on a fucking napkin. I was just like smashed. And then the, 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 the guy behind the bar was just like, He's like, what room are you in? I was like, I'll show you my car. And he's like, all right, I got you. And he, and he, and he, and he walked me up to my room and put me to bed. <laughs> what room are you in? Fuck this, if I know. I don't know. This is, like, this is the thing with the number. I'm like, I don't know how to get up there. He's just like, I got you, bro. <laughs> and he literally, he like basically just put his arm around me and he carried me up to, like, he's a big dude, right? And he carried me up to my room, put me to bed. and was like, sweet dreams, bitch. And like, I was like, thanks, bro. <laughs> and then the next day, because he's working at the same bar every day, the next day I came down, I tipped him 50 bucks. I was like, you, you're like, thank you so much for that yesterday. He's like, all right, well, do you want another beer? I was like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I became like best friends with that guy. Like, you know, you like, want was, another beer? Absolutely, I do. Absolutely. And like, there's a crazy part about it is too, like, like the bartenders in Australia, like they're not allowed to drink on the job. They're not allowed to do any of that kind of stuff. Whereas in America, I was in LA at a bar in America and I was just like, um, the lady behind the bar was like, we were just chatting. Like we chatted for like two, three hours. And then she was drinking with me. And I was just like, do you know what I mean? I was like, is this okay? Is this a thing that people do? She's like, yeah, I do this all the time. And I was just like, it's like, I was doing a shot. She was like, I'll do one too. Like, we'll do a shot together. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and then it's just, it's just crazy. It's so different, bro. Not, not, like, not Zilla to... over, over chatting somebody at a bar. No, never. No, never. No, that wouldn't be me. Like, <laughs> fucking, but you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's a crazy concept, bro. And I, and yeah, I, I, mean... I just love everything it's about. Like, it's not just the, not just the, the fact that you can get pissed. That's not the reason I love it so much. It's the fact that right, it's, right, it's, right. It's, it's, it's to the responsibility of the person who's sitting in the chair. So like, instead of the establishment being responsible, you know, for, for whatever you do, it's you being responsible for you. 
And that's what I love about yeah. America because everyone's responsible for their own actions. And there's consequences if you fuck that up. Like, it's, it's very obvious what the consequences are. Like, you know, whereas like in Australia, people try to push it and, get, and they don't get away with it because of how strict the rules are all the time on everything. It's just very, it's right. like nanny nanny. Like, it's like, we take care of you because you're a child sort of situation. That's how I feel. Yeah. It's like, it's like well, you can't be trusted because you're an Australian. It's like, oh, fuck. Like, you know, and then, but if not, when I was in America, I felt the opposite. I was like, we trust you to do the right thing. Um, here's all the tools. You know what I mean? Like, it's, and that's, Dude, it's, and it's crazy different. Like, I would love to visit Australia one day. Like, but everything there wants to kill you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily. I think you have so many dangerous ass animals on that island it's unreal <laughs> yeah the thing is though like if you live in the city you barely see them like you know oh, what I mean? really like, if you live in the city like the the most you'll see is maybe the occasional like spider or snake like but it's not it's not it's not like you know if you live in the country and it's like brown snake breeding season or some shit like that you know like that's that's scary as fuck like but you know you, you're not you're not that in danger of things you know when you're in the city yeah, because y'all have y'all have the most venomous snake in the world there, right? The black taipan? We have we have the top ten. Top ten. Top ten in yeah, the yeah, world yeah. in ten. Australia. Like I think there's one the there's one snake. Hell? I think there's one snake in the top ten that we don't have in this country. I think there's only one though. But out of the top ten deadliest snakes, I'm pretty sure someone can look this up. Um if you want to check. Do y'all, y'all have cobras in, in Australia? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure we have everything. It's fucking wild. Like um, obviously it's, it's like, it's like, uh, I think the brown snake for us, I think is one of the most venomous snakes we have. And that yeah. it's the venom. I think, I believe the venom, the venom from a brown snake, if you get bitten, you got about an hour and you got to get that anti-venom. Like that's, that's madness, dude. Like it's dude. I have one time I was uh, living in Queensland, which is like a thousand caves sort of north of here, like sort of like tro- more tropics sort of area. And, um, yeah. I was sitting in my backyard and uh, having a beer after work and the cat was running around the yard and then all of a sudden there was just a brown snake in the yard and my cat was trying to fucking fight a brown snake and I was like this is not okay this is not going to end well for anyone like she gets bit by that thing she's dead in 20 minutes like I yeah. and, and, and my cat is just like no fear cat so it's like look I'm just going to punch this thing in the face I'm like please don't like and I'm just like I don't know how to do how to fix this but I'm like, if I get oh, bitten, like, I'm fucking what a, dead. So what like, a, like, what a non-threatening name for a snake, right? Like, brown snake. Like, who the fuck is going to be afraid of that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you see it, and it doesn't look that threatening, but then its venom is just fucked. Okay? Yeah. It, it, can, it can proper fuck you up. So it's like, it's always funny, though. The reason that, that so many animals in Australia are so deadly is because it was left untouched for so long. So, yeah. like, the reason that all the animals, like, all, every animal, like... Uh, in this country basically evolved to fight each other. See you know what I mean? So it's like they Crazy. it was like it was like dog eat dog. So like, you know, the reason the crocodiles are so big is because they had to fight other crocodiles. Like the reason yeah. the kangaroos got so big is because, you know, and the, the reason they grew like they, they were originally marsupials. Like they classified as marsupials. You know yeah. what I mean? And like so you think a marsupial you think like a rat or like a like right. a possum, you know? A kangaroo is just an evolution of that. You know what I mean? And it just grew and grew and grew to the point because it was it was untouched it was untouched fauna like it there was literally no one here to monitor it for hundreds yeah, of thousands those, of years you all have those kangaroos that look like they're on steroids man got those big ass arms on them for no reason at all those My big God. red ones man they are fucking terrifying bro they will kill you dude they will dude. literally kill you like they and they don't look that threatening right but you get up close to a male red kangaroo it is it's got it's got like more muscles than any bodybuilder you've ever seen, bro. And if that thing kicks you, it'll tear your gut straight out. Like it has claws the size they, of and they stand races, like dude. don't they stand like almost seven feet tall or something? They're huge, man, and they will punch you in the face. Like they are not scared. Like you come near them, and they will they will square you up. You don't you don't yeah. go near those things. You just let them do whatever. Like you know, That's it's madness. Just... Did you see that video? It was from a couple years ago. Oh, I know what died. I'm sure yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. out in the middle of Australia somewhere, but he's like out on his ranch and he rolls up on this kangaroo that's got his dog in a headlock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he like runs up to try to help his dog and that kangaroo like squared up on him, dude, and he jacked that he jacked that kangaroo right in the nose, dude. Just whop! I mean, he hit that kangaroo so hard and that kangaroo looked at him like that's not how that's supposed to work. <laughs> yeah. I understand that. That's wild, right? 
I mean, dude, the ferocity that he hit that kangaroo with was madness. I was like, dude, I can't believe you just punched a kangaroo in the face. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, it's fight or flight a little bit, isn't it? Like, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. My, dog, my dog's in danger. You know what I mean? Like, it's got to be done. <laughs> yeah. Dude, wild. And dude, wild. that kangaroo didn't do nothing, man. That kangaroo just, like, turned and bounced away. Like, yeah, I don't want to fuck with that guy anymore. He hits back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, dude, before we, before we finish up, I'm, I'm having the greatest conversation with you. Like we, we could talk for fucking 10 years. Like there is no, there is no doubt in my mind. We could talk for 10 years. I, uh, I love having you bro. And uh, you're an absolute, you're absolute pleasure to have bro. You're, you're a, you're a staple of this community dude. And I really enjoy you being in the chat. I enjoy being in your chat. I enjoy sharing everyone and everything with you bro. I, it's been an absolute pleasure. An absolute pleasure. Um, before we, before we finish up, bro, can you just do me a favor? Um, give us the lowdown on what's in the future for 2022 for Chris Champion's channel and, and you as a person and, uh, any, any other things you want to add to, uh, to give the chat a bit of more insight on yourself? Man, 2022, man, ultimate goal, ultimate goal is to just keep growing the channel, man. Um, you know, I'd like to hopefully hit 2k by the end of the year. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd like to be sitting at 20 to 30 viewers average, um, 100%. Um, you know, life is good right now. Obviously, I'm in the middle of a PC build, so I'd like to have that done in the next few months. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a streaming PC primarily um, just to help run my stream a little better and uh, be able to handle it a little more. Um, but, man, other than that, dude, life's great right now, dude. Like, you know, I've got a, I've got a solid job. Um, you know, I'm married and all that, you know, we're, we're holding things down over here. Yeah. Um, so I mean, basically in my life right now is just my stream, like, you know, building it and building it and building it, meeting new communities, um, meeting other people from communities to, to help grow mine. Um, well, yeah, man, that's, never... that's basically it. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. I really appreciate that. And, um, I mean, look, we gotta, the, the greatest thing, the greatest thing you can do on this platform and the people that want to use it correctly is, is go and watch other people's streams guys like go take take your you know if you got some you got spare 10 minutes you got spare 20 minutes whatever it might be and you see someone online like that's just chilling and uh you know you like their content go and say hello like go and say yeah. hello to them go and hang out with them um you know somebody who's sitting there with say one viewer and they're and they're talking to themselves and playing a video game and they're just chilling but they you, you like their vibe go and talk to them for like 20 minutes that might make their day bro it might make their week like they might you might be the only person that came in for the week and and that made that that they will remember you you know what i mean they'll remember you then you make a good friend and then all of a sudden you know that that extra person comes in here or you go back to them and then you help them and they help you and it's just it, all it, it, you just got to use this platform correctly it is a open source of opportunity when it comes to making friends, networking together, enjoying each other's content, it is it is a way to grow, and you've just got to take advantage of it. And uh, but it just takes time. It takes time, and it takes commitment. And um, but it is very, it's very, very agent. rewarding. Um, it's very rewarding um, when it comes to like you know being able to do this every single day and just sitting here with this absolute community of fucking legends is just a pleasure. Yeah, sure I can tell you, I can tell you anybody who's, anybody who's turning your camera on or your stream on for the first time, you're not going to have, you know, 10 to 15 viewers on that first stream. Nah. Generally, it's going to be you and maybe a friend if you can get a friend to come watch. Um, and that's how I started. You know, when I started, I had three buddies that sat in there and watched until I hit affiliate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and my dad. <laughs> my dad sat there and watched me. My dad would watch me from the living room on his phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely, like, 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 you know, he's just like, you're playing this game terribly. I'm like, thanks, dad. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that was, that was, I sat for three months, bro. I literally had maybe one or two people just, just, yeah, just chilling. Every yeah, day that's about where I was at. And once, once I hit affiliate and then, you know, really coming down to learning how Twitch works and how important networking is. Um, social media plays a big part into it. W once yeah, you kind of realize how important all that is, you'll start seeing the growth. 100%, yeah. 100%. Well, look, dude, it's been a pleasure. All love oh, to you, bro. An absolute pleasure. Um, if you could do me a favor, go ahead and uh, DM uh, all your socials or put them in the Discord for everyone to follow. Um, right. I will be, I'll edit this up for YouTube and I'll, uh, 
put uh, you know all of that up. And I'll uh, link you that as well. Um, for anyone who's who wants to do the podcast in our community, and wants to hit me up, let me know. I'm more than happy to do this with everyone. Um, I love doing this. People love watching. Um, as Dave says, Dave loves the podcast. Dave's one of my IRLs as well. He loves coming in here watching this. You know what I mean? Grim's here as I well, which is one. fucking awesome. Uh, and obviously your mom in here as well, like just hanging out, which is wild. Um, I, uh, yeah, thank you for being here, bro. I really appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, thank you, dude. I appreciate you inviting me on. Like I said, uh, when you reached out to me about it, dude, I have been waiting for this. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it, dude. I love it. All right, well, dude, have a, have a great rest of your night, and um, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you soon. All right, man, appreciate it. Have a good night, dude. Much love, dude. Much love, brother. It's good stuff.